Representative Debbie Lesko from Arizona. She's joining us. Representative Lesko, it has been a big day. Can you share with us your reaction to the overturn of Roe versus Wade? Yeah, woohoo! <laughs> it's a great <laughs> That's a day good reaction. <laughs> great day for life. Um, people have been waiting this for this for almost 50 years. And so the, the reason that I'm so excited is because it gives us the opportunity to save uh, babies' lives, quite frankly. And that that's, I mean, what can be more important than that? Absolutely. And at the end of the day, I'm, I know that you, Representative Lesko, and your pro-life allies in Congress and us at Family Policy Alliance and the State Family Policy Councils, all of us are proud to be standing on the side of life. We believe that life is a God-given human right and that we firmly believe that history will show that we were on the right side of life. Um, so Representative Lesko, tell us what, what can we expect from Congress, from, your, from you and your pro-life allies, I know obviously we have a very pro-abortion house right now led by Speaker Pelosi, but what will you and your allies be doing um, to advance life after Roe is overturned now in Congress? Well, I've already co-sponsored several bills, pro-life bills that I think will be, um, Republicans will be putting forward whatever we can do uh, to promote life that we have the votes for. So I have signed on to uh, legislation that would prohibit abortions except for the life of the mother. I have signed on to the heartbeat uh, bill, which would prohibit abortions after you can detect a baby's heart. And I have signed on to the after 15 weeks uh, ban. So I've, I've signed on to all of them. Uh, and it just depends on who gets elected in November what kind of Republican majority we have and if they're pro-life and how many votes we can get and how conservative we can go. I do think there is appetite. I certainly want to pass legislation at the congressional level, pro-life legislation. Um, and you know, we'll just have to see what we can pass because even if we can pass it through the House, it needs the 60 votes over in the Senate. That's exactly right, Representative Lesko, but I'm so grateful for you and your colleagues for signing on to these bills, for pushing forward legislation that protects lives, um, even even in the way in the in the even despite uh, having Speaker Pelosi with the speaker's gavel. But you you actually made a really good point that we need to remind the audience about, and that is about the upcoming election, because pro-life policies don't go into place unless pro-life elected leaders are there. Um, and that's not to um, that's not to, to pat anybody on the back or just or to say anything untoward. It's that literally we can't have pro-life laws unless great leaders like you um, and your colleagues are it, sitting in the lawmaking seats so that we can have these lives that uh, laws that protect lives. Um, so, Representative Lesko, is there anything you'd like to share with us about your home state, your district of, of in Arizona about life? Well, I, I uh, have the Phoenix metropolitan area. So parts of Phoenix and the northern and western suburbs of Phoenix. And we have a lot of pro-life constituents. I've always been very upfront um, before my elections and on my candidacy and in my website that I am pro-life. And obviously the majority of the voters have voted me in. And so I assume the majority of my constituents are pro-life. Now there's different, you know, people have different views, of course, on it. Some people want abortion to the very last moment of birth. Uh, there's other people that um, are okay with abortions in the first trimester, but not after that. Uh, there's people like me that do not support any abortions except for protecting the life of the mother. Um, certainly, uh, I think we all need to pray about it. Uh, there's been a lot of prayers answered today that we now have the opportunity to give this decision back to the people through their elected representatives. So as you know, um, in the U.S. House of Representatives under Democrat control, they passed through the House legislation that would allow abortions up to the very last minute of birth uh, on demand. I, of course, voted against that, um, but we have a Democrat-controlled uh, House right now, and that's what they're going to continue to try to pass. 
um, until it gets back to Republican majority. We also need to make sure that we elect pro-life state legislators, because now with the overturning of Roe versus Wade, uh, it's going to go back to the state legislators to decide. So I'm afraid that um, hundreds of millions of dollars are going to be poured in to the states by Planned Parenthood and other pro-abortion um, groups uh, to try to uh, turn the state legislature over to pro-abortion candidates. And it's very important uh, that we keep a majority of pro-life state legislators, pro-life governors, pro-life um, attorney generals and pro-life uh, county attorneys. In Arizona, um, the two Democrats, the Democrat running for uh, attorney general and the Democrat running for the county uh, attorney's office have both publicly said they will not enforce any pro-life laws. Wow. It's awful. They, wow. you know, they publicly said it. And in Arizona, uh, as, as uh, like I said, Prior to Roe versus Wade, our laws have said that it prohibits abortions except in the case of the life of the mother. And that's the law of the land in Arizona. Yet these Democrat candidates for law enforcement and prosecution say that they will not enforce the law, which is just terrible. Wow. Representative Lesko, that's so terrible. Um, I, I think that's actually a really good good point because if you can have all the, the pro-life laws on the books in the world, but if, if you don't have the, the people ready and willing to enforce them and to do their job to enforce them, that's a problem. And I think people on both sides of the aisle should be concerned about that. People refusing to do their job and to enforce laws that are already on the books. That is an extremely good point. I also think the point you made about um, a, abortion sort of crossing state lines, the infiltration of chemical abortion and the, um, the, the continued push to reach into states that even have pro-life laws by the abortion lobby. All of those are very concerning things. And we look forward to working with you and your, your pro-life colleagues in Congress to do what we can to stop that and to ensure that the, the pro-life states can uh, continue to move forward with their strong pro-life laws and that uh, the, the pro-life laws will be enforced for sure. Um, Representative Lesko, let me ask you one last question and then I'll let you go. I know you, it's been a very busy day. Um, tell, tell us, we've been asking all of our guests, what were you doing when you heard that the decision that to overturn Roe versus Wade came down? Well, I was, um, I had just got out of a briefing um, with the Energy and Commerce Committee of which I serve. Uh, and heard from Kathy McMorris Rogers, who's our top Republican on the committee, that the, the decision was supposed to be coming out soon. I went back to my office. My staff had not heard that. And so I told them, you know, the decision is supposed to be coming out soon. And sure enough, uh, I was just in my Washington, D.C. office talking to my staff when the decision came out. And then I joined um, a large group of Republicans for a press conference celebrating the Supreme Court decision and uh, talking about how Republicans are pro-life. And it's very sad that the Democrats have tried to take out via election uh, every single uh, pro-life Democrat. The only one left that votes pro-life on some issues is Henry Cuellar from Texas. And the, the liberal radical Democrats here tried to take him out in a primary election, but he won. But he's the only Democrat in the U.S. House of Representatives that will vote for any pro-life legislation. And um, it, it, it's just sad. The Democrat party has really changed very radically. Another thing I wanted to say to you is that I'm very concerned about the pro-life pregnancy centers in Arizona. Uh, I uh, got a text from Choices Pregnancy Centers in Arizona and they have information uh, that a group uh, wants to burn down their pregnancy centers. They have had to hire extra security for them. And it's very disconcerting and dis 
disturbing to me that President Biden and our U.S. Attorney General haven't spoken out more against this. He needs to publicly, they both need to publicly say that there is no reason for violence. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we're living in very troubling times. And uh, when, you know, protesting uh, and threatening even Supreme Court justices is not, um, my Democratic colleagues do not talk against it. It's very sad. You are exactly right, Representative Lesko. We need from the highest office in the land, from the president himself, from the Department of Justice, we need a swift and direct and strong condemn condemnation of the violence against the pro-life pregnancy resource centers, against uh, pro-life organizations like our own ally, Wisconsin Family Council. Um, that is exactly right. This is concerning. I know uh, Family Policy Alliance, and I believe you uh, as well, Representative Lesko, signed on to a letter urging the, the Department of Justice to take action and to investigate to stop this. Because, you know, if, if this violence was going on, if, if uh, pro-lifers were uh, somehow attacking Planned Parenthoods or other facilities, they would be calling for a condemnation. And, and we, of course, would because we don't believe in that kind of violence. But it's it's been crickets from the other side while over 50 organizations now have, have faced violence in the wake of the leak of the, the Dobbs decision. So that is very, very well said, Representative Lesko. Um, actually, before you go, I'd like to bring on somebody you know. Uh, her name is Kathy Harrod. She's the head of the Center for Arizona Policy in your state of Arizona. So Kathy, we can see you. We can, I think we can Hi, hear Kathy. you. I love Kathy Harrod. She is a powerhouse, that woman. That she is. That Kathy, how are you? One of my my favorite congresswomen. My favorite congressman. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, uh, Kathy, what's going on in Arizona? Can you? Well, I just got word. Um, Planned Parenthood in their press conference said that they were pausing abortion services until the legal landscape could be resolved, and that they had thirty women at one of their centers scheduled for an abortion today, and they were sent home. So we know that at least, it's gonna get choked up here, that we know at least 30 women in Arizona today could not get an abortion. And you know, we just keep wow. saying that, I, I think the Congresswoman mentioned choices. We have nearly 50 pregnancy centers in our state and they are standing ready to help women. Um, they certainly are having to pay for security. And I'm gonna be saying over and over again, we in the pro-life movement, we need to be stepping up our donations, our giving. The pregnancy centers are on the front line. They're gonna be taking care of these women and we wanna be there. So it's um, kind of a, an incredible day. That is so well said. And, and Representative Lesko was talking about protecting the pregnancy resource centers too. And I think that's something, I, I know you all were very busy today, but that's something literally every guest on our live stream all day has said that we need to surround and support moms and their babies, as well as fund and support the pregnancy resource centers. And I think with the shadow of Roe off of the nation, now we can actually have that conversation and talk about what that looks like and create a much more hopeful vision that surrounds and supports moms and their babies like we never have before from the federal level all the way down to the state levels. Um, is there is there something that you could share about that from the congressional level, Representative Lesko, and from the state level, Kathy? Well, from the congressional level, I know Republicans are very interested in uh, increasing um, support for the pro-life pregnancy centers and in increasing support for vulnerable mothers and their babies. Because if we uh, say that we are for life, we need to support those vulnerable uh, mothers because they're often in a very difficult time of their life. They're making a very difficult decision. Um, they may not have the financial means uh, to care for a child, and that's why they're considering an abortion. Or they may be in a relationship that is violent and they don't want uh, that father to be involved in the child. There's all kinds of different reasons that women uh, seek abortions, and we need to be there. We need to be there to support those vulnerable women, whether that means funding, whether that means emotional help, 
Um, and we need to then continue to support the babies when they're born. Uh, this is so important. And uh, I know all Republicans here in the U.S. House of Representatives uh, support that cause. I love hearing that. That's so nice to hear that unanim unanimity, even at the congressional level. Kathy, what about you at, at the state level? What are you seeing as far as casting that vision in Arizona? Well, on the state level, our lawmakers have over the well over the last couple of days have passed a new state budget, and in that state budget, they have provided three million dollars for women who to, who are seeking abortion alternatives, five hundred thousand dollars for grants to uh, places that are providing for homeless pregnant women and providing services to homeless pregnant women. We have a a group of homes in the Phoenix area. Um, run by a group called Maggie's Place. So Maggie's Place has been getting some of that funding. They've done things like increase the reimbursement rate for doctors. So for a pregnant woman who's on the state Medicaid, basically the equivalent of the Medicaid or Medicare system, that the doctors will get greater reimbursement than they have been getting. So trying to do some of the little things they can within state law. And then I know that um, our the pregnancy centers here have been sitting on ready, um, that they know that their work is just beginning. And I, I looking forward to working uh, more closely with them. And there's a care portal that the Arizona Life Coalition has that is intended to connect pregnant women with local churches, with whatever their needs might be, if a woman needs a crib, whatever she might need. So I think we'll see a lot of that being more in the news. On the In Arizona, we're one of those states that has a pre-row law that prohibited abortion except to save the life of the mother. There are a lot of, um, well, Autumn, you, know, you and I know how this works. There are a lot of legal uncertainties today and how this is gonna play out, but we believe that pre-roll law is enforceable and we will see kind of what happens. There, there are a number of different legal issues surrounding it, but I, and I still expect that we will have the abortion industry running to the courts as quickly as they can get there to try to stop it. Um, but this for now, um, we're grateful that women in Arizona and their babies have a chance. I love that. Now, Kathy, I'm gonna pivot back to you again because Representative Lesko and I were talking earlier about um, the great bills that she sponsored, she and her pro-life colleagues at the congressional level, but knowing, knowing that uh, while Nancy Pelosi holds the speaker's gavel, that there's a problem there, they're not gonna be able to get those laws through. And so we're, we're eyeing November in the hopes that we could change who holds the speaker's gavel. Um, but for the state of Arizona, Kathy, what would you say are some of your, your top priorities? Um, well, I think the top priority is going to be defending against any lawsuits challenging our pre-roll law. So I think that when the abortion industry challenges the pre-roll law, that that's going to be a priority. Right now, Arizona, the ban on abortions because of a genetic condition of the unborn child is before the Ninth Circuit. That also was actually a, a, a legal um, process issue was before the U.S. Supreme Court. So we've got, we're in the courts on that. The Arizona legislature this week, pa I mean, I'm sorry, this session passed a 15-week limit on um, abortion in our state. So there's some controversy today on, well, what goes into effect, the pre-roll law or the 15-week limit? We believe that the, the pre-roll law goes into effect. So as far as like the next steps, I think on the legislative side, there's not a lot that I think to do until we see how these court cases, the anticipated court cases resolve. So I think really um, supporting the work of the pregnancy centers, getting pro-life people to understand how very important it is to vote, um, to work for pro-life candidates. We know that Arizona is a purple state. We have a U.S. Senator, Mark Kelly, who certainly um, supports um, legalized abortion up until the moment of birth with the government paying for it. And we need to make sure that that we um, don't have him reelected in November as our state senator. So I think there'll be I think really what's next in our state is going to be the election season and and just preparing for the future, you know, working in the courts. And we did have a state ballot measure that was filed that would enshrine abortion rights and uh, excuse me, abortion rights in our state constitution. They only have until the first week of July to file you know, well over 400,000 signatures. So we don't anticipate it will be on the ballot this year, but I think that we, we as a pro-life community will come together across the state, all ethnicities, all races, that we will come together, have a strong pro-life movement so we can fight off any uh, measures at the ballot in 2024 and any legislative attempts next January to really um, have abortion rights um, prevail in our state. Well said. 
So if you are from Arizona, we urge you to really get involved with Center for Arizona Policy. Uh, Kathy Herod is on with us, uh, uh, at least on my screen, she's on the bottom part of the screen, Kathy Herod. Kathy, do you wanna give Center for Arizona Policy's website for everyone so that they can connect with you? Sure, it's um, azpolicy.org, azpolicy.org. And um, the first week of July, we'll have our voter guide website up, and that is azvoterguide.com. But start at azpolicy.org, and we'll take care of you and get you where you need to be. And yes, it's a time to join together. And we appreciate our work with Family Policy Alliance. Um, Congresswoman Lesko is certainly one of our heroes, um, has been um, a pro-life leader in our state for many years. And it's been a joy to be on with her today and to know um, that she's in DC fighting for babies and women. So well said. Yes, Representative Lesko, thank you for your leadership at the federal level. Kathy, thank you for your leadership in Arizona. I'm gonna just ask one last question while we're all on the screen. We've got three women on here. I admire both of you so much. Um, I talked about this with uh, Victoria Cobb from the state of Virginia, heading up the Virginia Family Council, Family Council there. Um, I would like to know your both of your responses to that argument that we hear so often from the left of um, a woman can't succeed. A woman can't be successful unless she has access to abortions. Um, you know, it sounds so backwards now in 2022 that we have to kill off our children in order to be successful women or to uh, be economically viable is, is one I heard recently. How would both of you respond to that? And Representative Lesko, I'll, I'll start with you first. Well, it's absolutely false. And there are many, many successful children, including myself. I have three children and five, five grandchildren through time itself. And so the proof is in the pudding. There's uh, there's all kinds of mothers that are very successful world that uh, had children through difficult situations and they love their children. And uh, so, I mean, it's a ridiculous, that's a ridiculous argument. Well said, I've got two little ones too, Representative Lesko, I, and I admire all you're doing in your leadership um, while being a mom, a successful one at that. Kathy, what about you? Well, it's an interesting question. Um, during my law school years, my college years, I was pro-choice on abortion, that I thought abortion should remain legal. Uh, I certainly have changed my position on that, obviously. And I think that women have been sold such a false bill of goods, um, both on that you can't do whatever you feel called to do, as well as have children, that um, that abortion is just a, a, you know, it's a glob of tissue for the unborn child. So I think the good news is, is that women have woken up that, yes, you can, uh, you know, that it is an unborn child's life within within you, and that's a life worthy of protection, and that women do have so many options today on how they can facilitate. I mean, Autumn, you're certainly an example of, of a woman with, with young children. Um, for me, my story was that I my hours went up as my children got older, so I had the, the ability to be at home um, at times when I wanted to be at home, and then also um, to work, and, and especially with remote working even now. So women have the opportunities that, that they need to have, and 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 that's that's um, such a positive development. And I certainly think younger women um, get this, they know how to do it, and that no woman today is held back from, and will be held back simply because she can't get an abortion. I mean, it's just, it's another scare tactic, and it's fear-mongering by the pro-abortion crew that we see all the time. Well said, beautifully said. And you both are such a wonderful, beautiful example of that um, for me and for other women. So thank you so much, Representative Lesko, Kathy Herod with Center for Arizona Policy. Both of them need your support. Please support Representative Lesko and her pro-life colleagues come November. Uh, please stand with Center for Arizona Policy. They are wonderful, our wonderful ally in the state of Arizona.